One of the largest actual pain points, I'm talking about like IRL pain points of most players that play PoE is going to be in their hands and in their wrists. These are the two things that take the most damage when you try to play this game. You've probably felt this before when you played a little bit too much PoE or if you're someone who is susceptible to those kinds of things, the damage that is done to your hands and wrists and fingers and such is not ignorable. So anytime that there is something that GGG has implemented that has made it so that there is less stress on your digits, I've always been a big fan of it. And the flask rework that they did over the last couple of patches has been one of the major ones that has made it significantly easier to handle some wrist and hand pain. So I'll go over how to craft those flasks, how to get the most out of them, the cheapest way to go about them, setting them up and all that kind of good stuff in this video. But first, if you're enjoying this content or these videos are helping you out, make sure to give them a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the method of actually automating your flasks. Now, the whole idea here is that you're looking to get a flask that has gain charges when you're hit by an enemy, some other secondary mod, which I will teach you how to optimize, as well as used when charges reach full. This might seem straightforward, and it is relatively straightforward, but there are better and easier ways to do this. Now, the idea here is I'm gonna show you two flasks. I'm gonna show you the main method that I use to get this, which mods you should be looking for, and when you should roll over certain things. So the whole idea here is optimizing the best way to get the on average best modifiers from these flasks. So as I said, the main modifier we're looking for is gain charges when hit by an enemy. This is going to be a prefix. So when we're rolling a flask, we are mainly going to be looking for a good suffix that we can use with it as well as that prefix. Now you do want to make sure that you quality your flasks with glass blowers bobbles before you roll them. It only requires four instead of 10 if the item is white. And the idea here is that we're going to be rolling with alteration orbs. Now, depending on the suffix that you get, like elemental resistances might be something that you want to, you know, cover for like max resist on like a curse or something like that. But what you're really looking for, okay, that was really, really easy, but we got five charges when hit by an enemy as well as attack speed. Now attack speed wouldn't be particularly good for this build. However, we got a good set of mods. We're gonna take this off. We're going to move to the next flask that we're gonna roll. Same thing, quality it up, make sure that we hit it here. Now. Here's a good example. So we got gain six charges when hit by an enemy and immunity to shock. Now this is a good set of mods if you need immunity to shock. However, it is on a very short duration flask. Quicksilver flasks don't last that long. So the problem here is that you're only gonna have this flask lasting for 3.9 seconds. If you really, really feel like you desperately need shock immunity, you could leave this on here. I personally would not. A Quicksilver flask only lasts a short amount of time compared to like a Basalt or like whatever the flask is that gives you Consecrated Ground. Those alternate kinds of flasks last much longer, so if you do need to get some of these less duration and immune to certain ailment mods on the flask, I would put it on one of those flasks that has a naturally longer duration so you don't have to worry about that. So while this is a very good flask, you have two choices here. You can either try to hit it with an orb of annulment to try to get off the less duration and the immunity to shock because this is gain six charges, which we're gonna do, and we did manage to do that. Now you can do two things here as well. You can either go to Einhar and craft some particular craft on it of the flasks, Einhardt crafts are not really that great anymore for flasks, but you can do that. Alternatively, you can just augment it again, and we got a very good one. Reduced effect of curses on you during flask effect. So if you're like an Inquisitor, this and the Inquisitor ascendancies that give you like Consecrated Ground and Consecrated Ground effect, you're pretty much curse immune with just this flask. So the idea is, is we can move on to our next flask. So we would be doing another one here. So we've got two flasks that are done, and we'd be moving on to the third one. Now, of course, you'd want to scour it quality it up and you'd start moving into this, rolling with alteration orbs and looking for those mods. Now I got relatively lucky on the first two, that happened very quickly, but here's another example. So this is a relatively short duration flask and I think that immunity to bleeding and corrupting blood would be better on a life flask if you were going to use it. So we can do once again, two things. We can either annul this or we can roll over with an alteration. Now personally, this is only four charges. If alteration orbs are very cheap and you have a decent amount of money and you're just trying to get particular, very specific flasks, you can just go ahead and use it. Didn't hit the right mod and we can keep rolling. Now, in cases like this where you get a really low charges and something that isn't really useful, I personally would keep rolling just because I do need pretty solid uh, modifiers here. Once again, a low amount of charges gained. We're mainly looking for things that would benefit like whatever build that you're playing, whether it be like cast speed or attack speed or movement speed or things like that, right? Or 
the um, reduced effect of curses and such. That's mainly what we're looking for here. Armor, evasion if your build needs those kinds of things. Those are things that you really want to be looking for. Now something to keep in mind as well is that if you do get that good suffix, you can always just augment onto it and try to see if you can get the uh, gain charges whenever you're hit or like life leech or energy shield leech rather. Those are the kind of mods that you're looking for. Now, here we go. So spell damage and energy shield, that's a suffix. We'll try to go for a prefix there, didn't get it. So on and so forth, there you go. There's another good one. So the idea here is that we got cast speed and we don't really need attack speed, right? So say cast speed is very good for your build, but you don't really need attack speed. So now you don't really need this attack speed modifier here anymore. You can always do an orb of annulment if you do have a good prefix on it. Unfortunately, we took that one off and we are going to keep rolling here and look for something that is a better suffix for us because attack speed really doesn't do anything or say attack speed doesn't really do anything for the build that we're currently running. So that's the whole idea here. You just roll through these flasks, you try to look for a good suffix, meaning armor there, augment onto it, and just roll between them. You don't need to go like, you don't need to make it so that you get a quicksilver flask with increased movement speed as the suffix. You don't need to do that. You just need a variety of those good suffixes on all of your flasks that you've got. Now say you've got your flask set up, right? What you can do is you can either just hit them with instilling orbs, or you can do this the smart way, go over to the crafting bench, pop the flask into here, and use five of the instilling orbs and five of these glass blowers bobbles, and use particularly used when charges reach full. This is the modifier that is going to be best for automating your flask when you're just running through maps. The reason for this is that this will automatically use your flask when it reaches full charges, and it doesn't have any kind of like qualifiers that it needs to be able to use it, which I can talk about a little bit here. So for example, reused at the end of this flask's effect. So if you use all your flasks and then it reuses at the end of the effect, if it doesn't have charges, the next time that happens, your flask no longer automates itself and it stops. And then there's similar problems with things like use when you use a guard skill or a travel skill. You're probably spamming these and you're just going to use up way too many of your flask charges. The used one hit a rare or unique enemy is actually pretty powerful, particularly for unique flasks. Unique flasks are not something that you can spam anymore. You can only use it really one time, maybe twice, depending on the build. So what I would suggest is that if you have some powerful unique flasks, Typically only have them use charges when you hit a rare or unique enemy. That's gonna be the best use here because it'll automate it in that sense that it'll only use up those flash charges whenever you are hitting a rare, which is pretty difficult nowadays, or a boss enemy, which is a little bit less difficult than a rare, but it is what it is. Now, as for all of these ones that say, use when you become frozen, chilled, shocked, ignited, all of these are not as important anymore, in my opinion, when you can just automate all your flasks and keep them up constantly while you're clearing. I think that it is just better to have all your flasks going at one time instead of having ones like, well, this one will only use when it's chilled because then you don't get the benefit of whatever that flask is all the time. Now, there is one other modifier here called use when you take a savage hit. This can be good on very particular flasks, like say that one that is a, uh, I think it's Forbidden Taste, I think is the name of it. The one where it gives you a bunch of life back if you get hit really hard. There are some small things like that that could be good, but for the majority of your utility flasks, you should be used when charges reach full. Now, I'm gonna swap characters here so I can give you an idea of how this actually works. We'll jump back over to Sentinel League. And I have all four of my utility flasks set to be exactly this. The way that it'll work is that you just go into a map. You don't have to press anything. There's no extra buttons that you have to press on your flask. You only have to activate them manually if you are like activating them for a boss or something like that. So I've got use when charges reach full as well as gain charges on hit and a variety of different modifiers here. So you'll see that I have a ruby flask, which is a much longer duration flask. And then I've put the immunity to poison on this ruby flask. That makes it so that it still lasts like six and a half seconds almost, but I still do get the immunity to poison there. However, with some of my shorter flasks, I'm just doing like elemental resistances or reduced effect of curses, attack speed, things like that. The idea here is that we'll just jump into a random map and I will, let's just do random tier 14. Okay, we'll hit it with an alchemy orb. I've mainly been doing heist recently. Players gain 50% reduced flash charges. Don't want that because it's not gonna show it off properly. Okay, so this is fine. So the idea here is that whenever you reach full charges or gain any charges while the flask is at full, it will automatically activate. So I'm going to just run through here and I will turn my aura on. And you'll notice if you look at my flask, even though my flask hand is up here, as soon as those flasks are hitting full charges, they are reactivating. So you can just run through. It keeps all of your flasks active at pretty much all times as long as you are killing enemies and gaining charges. You automate all of your flasks and you no longer have to even worry about pressing them. You can just pretty much 
feel safe that your flasks are going to be on as long as you are clearing and killing enemies. Now you will still have to use your life flask. You can't just automate the life flask, unfortunately. It's not that easy. You need to use it whenever you need to use it. I personally think that the best case for a life flask is going to be putting something like Grant's Immunity to Corrupting Blood and Bleeding on it, because typically you want those in very particular circumstances and you just want to have longer durations on these utility flasks to make it easier to keep up the buffs. So that's the whole idea behind automating your flasks. This will save your hand, save your wrist. It does take a little bit of getting used to because if you're like me and you just kind of like slam your keyboard every four or five seconds because you're so used to having your flask like that, it does take a little bit to get used to and you will still have to press those buttons sometimes during bosses. If you're playing a build that can kind of just face tank bosses and get hit by them a little bit, these still automate because if the boss hits you a bunch, you're still getting those flash charges, makes it so that you can use them on bosses, makes them so that you can use it while clearing. It's basically just the best way to go about using your flask at this point. I think that this is one of the biggest changes that they've ever done for flasks and the new flask system honestly is so much better than the old one just because I can automate it without having to use a program that cheats and, you know, gets you banned. And that is going to be it for the video. So hopefully I was able to save your wrists and your hands and your fingers and all of that. And this makes the game significantly easier to play for you. More straightforward. You don't have to deal with all of that pain and all of that headache of slamming your flask every couple of seconds. You might have to work on your muscle memory a little bit because I know even I, myself, when, when I have to transition into using the auto flask, I'm still kind of pressing them occasionally and it's not good because it uses up all your charges. But remember, boys, if these videos help you out, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest content, and stay safe out there in Ray Class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.